Bakra. Some say eight. Right? Before meaning eight years after the bi'tha that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given the command of the of the salah. Right? Of the salah. Tayyip. Some say huh? three years before the hijrah. Some say huh? Some say one year and a half. Meaning one year and a half before the hijrah. Some say five years before the hijrah. Some say three years before the hijrah. Right? That the salah was being legislated and commanded. But ala ayyin, there was nothing else that was commanded upon the believers except what? At tawheed and as salah. Now that shows the importance of these two things. That shows the importance of these two things. And this is why Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu qal. This is why Abdullah ibn Mas'ud he say, Whomsoever want to die upon Islam, make sure you safeguard your five daily prayers. Whomsoever want to die upon Islam. And this I'm saying in alhamdulillah for myself and for the youth. Whomsoever want to die as a Muslim, safeguard your salawat. Don't be too tired because you had a basketball game or practice. Don't be too tired because you have tons of homeworks, homework. Don't be too tired because of this or because of that. So you're going to just go days without establishing your salah. If you start having that habit when you're young, it will be very difficult for you to catch up with that. Except for those who Allah have mercy upon them. So Alhamdulillah, Ibn Mas'ud, he say what? Whomsoever write that down. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he say, I want you to write it in the big characters, in big capital letters. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he say, Whomsoever wanna die upon Islam, man arada an yamut ala al-Islam, falihafidh ala salawat al-khams. Whomsoever wanna die upon Islam, safeguard your five daily salawat. Because, and look at it. A person, the believer, will only die between salawat. Right? A person will only die between two salah. Huh? Either you die, either the person die between Maghrib and Isha. Or he die between after Isha, which is between Isha and Fajr. Or he die between Dhuhr and Asr. Or he die between Fajr and Dhuhr. Or he die between the two salawat. But alhamdulillah, preserving the salawat will give the individual bi'ithnillahi ta'ala to die upon al-Islam. So don't be too tired, oh you my son. My nephew, don't be too tired, right? Just because oh, we had a long day at school, a teacher made, gave us a hard time. No man, that's not an excuse. Alhamdulillah, the salah will only aid you. The salah will only aid you. It's, it's not going to be against you. Establishing will only aid you. It's only aiding you, alhamdulillah. Because Allah haven't commanded us anything except it is a maslaha for us. It is, except it is a rectification and a benefit for us. It is none to aid Allah Ta'ala. Allah doesn't need nobody's aid, does He? No, He don't. So this is for us. And alhamdulillah, how many times a person is doing a tedious job, right? And he is stuck. The salah comes, he go pray. And when he comes back from the salah, the matters become so easy in front of him. As it never became very difficult on him. And we all can testify to this. Sometimes you look at the job, oh, this is easy. Now one bolt is going to take you eight hours but after Alhamdulillah, Salah time, you go pray, come back. Man, it's like Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala aided you in a way that you didn't see it coming. So it is now Alhamdulillah something that is making you, you know, have bad grades. But no, the reality is it's going to help you have good grades. Because in the Salah you say, oh Allah aid me. Oh Allah help me in my school. Oh Allah allow me to have good grades. Oh Allah allow me to memorize this surah. And like said that. So it is aiding you, alhamdulillah. So know that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallama, فَلَمَّا اسْتَقَرَّ بِالْمَدِينَةِ 
when the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam he settled in Medina then all the remaining points of the religion of the legislation were being jazakallah were being and he now commended unto him he say مثل zakat like a zakat well, there is a point that barakallahu feekum needed to be mentioned in regard to the zakat right which was which is what which is one of the statement of some of the scholars they say what the zakat was what was Omar? In Medina, no, some say what? It was made in Mecca. But how? 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 Meaning, it, it was not made mufassalan or mufassilan. It was not made in detail, but it was made jumlatan. It was made an obligation, yani in, in its generality. But how? The miqdar, or the nisab, or the how to pay it, unto who to give it, right? How much to pay? All of those was being detailed in Medina. All those was being detailed in where? In Medina. So likewise, al-hajj, it was being established, it was being commanded in, barakallahu fikum, in also in, 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 in Medina. Likewise, well, jihad, well, jihad. And we talked about the command of the jihad. How did the command of the jihad came about, Muhammad? Um, it first started off uh, by not fighting back. Very good. It, start, it first started with being haram to fight back. It was haram to fight back. Okay, after that? And after when they, um, when they became stronger. Right. Commended. Was it commended or was given the, huh? The permission, the permission to fight back. Okay, that's number two. Number three. Two. To fight back who? Only those who are fighting you. To fight only those who are fighting you. To fight only those who are fighting you. To fight only those who are fighting you. That was the third one. Number four. Everybody. Meaning among the disbelievers. But of course, this is, as we mentioned, based on how it is legislated in the Sharia. Not like how ISIS are doing. Or Boko Haram is doing. Or the other criminal groups, the gangsters, you know, that they get together and be doing. La. But rather upon the legislation of Islam. And likewise, well, Adhan, and the call of the Salah, Alhamdulillah, was also being legislated in where? In Barakallah Fikum, in? In? The call. The call of the Adhan. We're talking about here the obligation. Make the difference though. Making the difference between the obligation of it. Right? The obligation of it. For instance, and as Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah he brought in regard to that the people of Jahiliyyah in Mecca, the Yusuf as Ashura. And the Messenger Ali Salatu Wasalam also used to fast Ashura. In Mecca. Tayyip. So here, the adhan, the obligation of the adhan, the obligation of it. We gotta make the difference. The obligation of the adhan. Well Amru bil Ma'ruf wa nahi anil munkar and also enjoying the good and forbidding the evil. Right? Enjoying the good and forbidding the evil. This is something that is also from the legislation. Right? Enjoying the good and forbidding the evil. وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ Enjoying the good and forbidding the evil. Right? وَغَيْرِ ذَلِكَ مِنْ شَعَائِرِ الْإِسْلَامِ And other than this, what he mentioned from the legislation of the of Al-Islam. 
So therefore, أَخَذَ عَلَى هَذَا عَشَرَ سِنِينَ then this is what the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam was upon for ten years. This was what he was upon for ten years. That the remaining obligations of the religion was being ordered and commended by Allah in that period of ten years. وَبَعَدَهَا So that means that after that the sharia was what? Completed. Then what happened after that? If the Sharia is completed, what else? What's what's gonna happen after the Sharia is completed? Omar, right? It's completed. What ha what's gonna happen? A major issue that can happen after the Sharia is completed. Right, what is the major event that will happen after the Sharia is completed? Ahsanta. The next thing will be the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? Because his mission is what? Completed. So he mentioned, أَخَذَ عَلَى هَذَا عَشَرَ سِنِينَ And upon those ten years, that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was establishing the remaining point of what? The Sharia of Al-Islam. And wa ba'daha, and after that, to wifiya salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi, and after that, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he died. And after that, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, he died. You know, saying that the Prophet Sallallahu died is, is something that the Sufis don't accept. <coughs> and you know what is their shubuhat? One of their shubuhat? No, one of their shubuhat that they use. One of their shubuhat that they use. I got a nice book as a prize for that. One of the doubts that they use to ay Abu Sufyan. Eh, carry it off. Huh? Keep thinking. What is the? I mean, this is important for us to know because if, in case they pull this, Tayyip, Muhammad, Omar, ah, uh, not one of the. Ho no, not that verse. <coughs> Repeat the question. Meaning, the people of Sufi, of Sufiya, the grave worshippers, they don't believe that the Prophet died. And they be taking some things from the religion and they want to use it as, we will say, as falsehood. Not evidence, but as shubuhat. When the person is making the tashahud, what do we say? As-salamu. Huh? Alayka. Assalamu alayka. Wa alaykum assalam to Allah. Al Hajj. Assalamu alayka. Now listen, I'm going to say it now publicly. For those brothers, alhamdulillah, it, it, that barakallah, if you went to Hajj and come back, it will not be tolerated that you drag your pants no more. Seriously. On a serious note. Seriously. And we mentioned this, Allahu Akbar. One of the brothers, he's not here, I'm going to mention his name. Abdullah Drame, the quiet one. Ever since he came from Hajj, we never seen him drag his pants no more. Never seen him drag his pants after he came from Hajj. Ila yawmina hadha. So when they say, Assalamu alayka, shufka, right? Assalamu alaikum is like you to, to you, meaning somebody that is right in front of you. 
Some, there's not somebody that is hidden. 